Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at Extreme X-Men number 5, the epic conclusion in the five-part miniseries by Chris Claremont and Salvador La Roca, reuniting for their um, Extreme X-Men book, uh, long-running title um, from, I guess, what, the early 2000s, um, something like that. Anyway, so uh, great cover here. Love the image of Gambit front and center with Rogue, Sage, and Bishop all in tow. Um, very much in line with what um, looks like, you know, you would got, have gotten from the original run on the Extreme X-Men series. So that is what we're looking at today. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and let's get right into it. I've been really enjoying these. I guess people are kind of calling them nostalgic, uh, nostalgia series. You know, it's like we have X, Chris Claremont reuniting with Salvador La Roca. Their title, um, Extreme X-Men, was so good. Um, a fairly lengthy run. I mean, it, I, I believe. Um, and uh, quite popular. So I feel like people would totally be there for it. Chris Claremont's Gambit series was really excellent. I feel like he's kind of um, uh, hit a new renaissance with his writing. Um, uh, this Extreme X-Men is kind of interesting because it kind of picks up where Extreme X-Men left off. Admittedly, I didn't really follow it consistently throughout its whole run, but it's also acting as a sequel to the Kitty Pride and Wolverine series, the much beloved Kitty Pride and Wolverine series, where Kitty famously, like, it was kind of like an innocence loss kind of story where Kitty became a ninja under the, you know, gui guidance of Wolverine, sort of. Um, hold the line by Chris Claremont and Salvador La Roca. Guru Effects uh, color artist. VCs Clayton Cole's letter and production. As you can see from the Dramatis Personae, we have quite the lineup here. Storm, who is going by Roe now for some strange reason. Um, Bishop, Remy LeBeau, Rogue, Sage, Catherine Kitty Pride, Shadowcat, Rachel Summer, Kitty's best friend, Lockheed, her very best dragon friend, Logan Wolverine, and Ogan, the villain, their adversary. Hilarious in a way, right? The art is really crazy here. Um, the colors are so bright. Um, I've enjoyed the art on this. Um, someone had mentioned, and um, of course, once they pointed out that, you know, Salvador La Roca um, is kind of using like 3D modeling to help with his art or something. Not saying that it's like AI or anything like that, but a lot of artists use like sort of like computer models or whatever just to get the, you know, perspective and the details and the buildings and stuff like that. And I guess I can sort of see it. But when I see like Sage's face here, that looks like what I remember from, you know, like, um, Salvador La Roca and his art on Extreme X-Men, which was colored by Liquid. And I remember Liquid being very, like, you know, kind of cutting edge, uh, kind of uh, um, coloring at the time. I believe they were coloring, like, from Salvador La Roca's pencils. And this has definitely, like, a more ink look, which if he's doing digitally now, then you can achieve that fairly easy and quickly. Um, <clears throat> it's funny because this is like Chris Claremont full throttle, like this is the big finale. You know, there's there's uh, the Extreme X-Men team are like court marshals now, which is kind of weird, right? Like, I don't know if I'm necessarily down for that. You can see all this crazy lightning. I do feel like there there's a lot of busyness going on with the color effects and the computer coloring here that may be just a little bit too much. It doesn't look horrible. I do kind of like the way it looks, but I just think, like, it's just too much. Like, it's just, like, there's, like, way so much going on. And, like, to have the lightning just scattered through everything and then, like, these snow dots on top of it, I don't know. It's just a lot. But it is kind of epic. I mean, who doesn't love Sage? Um, you know, who doesn't love a great, uh, you know, Chris Claremont heroine? It's kind of funny because, like, the lineup, as you saw, that I pointed out, it is, like, all of Chris Claremont's uh, uh, female heavy hitters, you know, Storms, uh, 
the only one missing is like, where's Psylocke? Like, I cannot believe Psylocke is not part of this. You know, the psychic totality of her powers being um, put into that psychic knife. I mean, it just seems like what is extreme X-Men without it? But like I said, I, maybe she was gone from the book at this point um, towards the run. And hey, he's Chris Claremont. He can do whatever the heck he wants, right? Who knows? Um, I mean, one thing, too, is that, like, um, you know, there are a lot of telepaths and, like, you kind of want to juggle the powers. Like, out of ten people, it's like you already have, um, you know, Rachel, who is a telepath. You have, um, there was another telepath. Um, was there not? I mean, oh, I guess there isn't, but... Maybe that's why you can't have two telepaths and um, Rachel probably won over Psylocke. And I will take, I'm sorry, maybe the unpopular opinion, but maybe popular. I will take Rachel Summers over Psylocke any day of the week. Thank you very much. I just love her character so much. I've always loved her since her debut. I feel like she's gotten the raw deal and I always like can I identify and go with the underdog. Ogan does look very cool here. Um... <clears throat> You know, I like I, I love the Gambit miniseries. I love this follow up. Interestingly enough, and I feel like it's next week is we'll see the debut of another exciting series. It's going to be another fi like apparently the five part limited series is the 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 way to go, like the perfect amount for a trade paperback, which is what I guess they're focused on. But um, uh, a storm like a storm limited series, Mohawk Storm. It's like a period piece, it takes place in, I guess, the 80s when she had their, her Mohawk, or of that era, like the lineup. Gorgeous covers by Alan Davis, written by Anne Nascenti, you know, famed ex-editor and writer of Daredevil and other things, one of my favorite writers. I love her, so I'm so excited for that. I cannot wait. I think it's going to be great. Like I said, I love these nostalgia, nostalgia series. You know, Mr. Fix-It by Peter David is another great series that I've been reviewing, so look for that in my list if you um, are, like, totally digging, like, this Extreme X-Men and Gambit. I reviewed that, too. Um, and I will be reviewing the Storm One Trust because I love Storm. And I love this page. I'm glad we stopped here. This looks fun. I do like uh, Phil Noto's art, so if he's drawing this, I might be willing to pick, pick this up. Um... How oh, Demi Goblin returns to put the hell in Hell's Kitchen. Why not? That sounds fun. I mean, I'm down to try it. I've been giving a lot of modern comics a try, and Marvel and DC are definitely hit or miss. But like I said, um, I'm old school, and this is Chris Claremont at his finest. He, this is very satisfying. The story comes to a great conclusion. It's very epic in scope. Um, you know. It, the characters are exactly written how I want them to be written, the ones that I know and love. Oh, as if I'm cute. Here's a, an ad for this. Uh, Anna Sante said, Coitian, Koshin, sorry, um, cover by Alan Davis. Love that logo. That looks so cool. And the Alan Davis cover, that would be enough alone. But Sid actually uh, drew the Gambit series, and his art is totally on point. It looks so great in, like, classic art. And um, Anna Sante, like I said, amazing writer. So this is coming out next week. Pick it up, guys. Um, aren't you glad I told you? That is a great panel. But, like, you can totally see where he might be using some sort of uh, computer program or whatever to get, like, the perfection of that cityscape. I do love a nice cityscape in a comic book. Captain Marvel, oh, how you disappoint me. That's all I'll say about that. Anyway, um... Like I said, this is fun. Totally great book. It looked great. I love the little update on Storm's hair with a little lightning bolt. I think that's cool. Like, I mean, is that hair? Like, how is that happening? Anyway, um, Rachel, Kitty, Bond. I mean, just, you know, the, like I said, it's a nostalgia series. It's like, I love all the relationships that Chris Claremont, you know, created and nurtured and the personalities he created and the whole world of the X-Men, and he is my X-Men. So I will always love a Chris Claremont X-Men book, but this was really well done, and I hope this is, uh, has been a success and opens the door for a lot more, because um, 
I think there are plenty of other stories he could explore, and I'm so there for it. But that said, let's not get extra caught in extreme X Men. You know, let's see, let's see. You know, heading that left, let's see him do X Men number four. You know, um, instead of wherever Jim Lee took it. You know what I mean? Let's see him reunite with Burn. Let's let's see something freaking crazy happen. Let's just the sky's the limit. I would love another X Men annual with uh, Art Adams, please. Like let that happen um if possible i don't know i just maybe i need to make a video what are your like claremont dream projects that you would like to see god knows we all have one i have plenty um this has been a great book so i do tell you if you miss the boat definitely pick up the trade or pick up the individual issues why not they've been great some fun variants thanks for watching guys subscribe to my channel if you haven't already hit that like button i'll bring you more soon